Shalom, beloved. A word. I was reading in the book of Sirach. Many call it Ecclesiasticus. I was in chapter 11, verse 29. But I was also reading chapter 12, verse 10. So I'm going to share it with you so that you see what I see below. The first thing that I want to show you, when I saw, when I read Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 29, it made me think of King Hezekiah. It made me think of King Hezekiah and many of the brothers and sisters who are in the faith. But I'm going to read what it says. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 29. Bring not every man into thine home. For the deceitful man or person has many trains, they have many faces. Like as a partridge taken and kept in the cage, so is the heart of the proud. And like a spy, watch if he for thy fall. For he lieth and wait, and turneth good into evil. And in things worthy of praise will lay blame upon thee. Of a spark of fire, a heap of coals is kindled. A sinful man lay of weight for blood. I also wanted to share chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So is his wickedness. Okay? Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching. Yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust had not been altogether wiped away. Many people, and I'm going to go back to Ecclesiasticus 11.29, bring not every man into thy house for the deceitful man or person. They have many faces. I'm going to read it. As I read it in my book, do not invite everyone into your home for many are the tricks of the crafty. Like a decoy partridge in a cage, so is the mind of the proud. And like spies, they observe your weakness for they lie in wait, turning good into evil and to worthy actions, they attach blame. Many of you whom I have spoken to live among people, family, friends, who you cannot trust. And yet many of us open our doors to them because we may not have been well advised about how to conduct ourselves. Bring not every person into thine house. Do not do it. Many are the tricks of the crafty. Many are the tricks of the crafty, beloved. Do not bring everybody in your house and never trust your enemy, even when they feign to suddenly have a change of heart. <clears throat> I'm going to show you King Hezekiah. He trusted his enemy. He trusted his enemy from Babylon. We're going to start at 2 Kings Chapter 20, starting at the 12th verse. And at that time, Beratak Baladin, the son of Baladin, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Now, when you read further before this portion, Hezekiah had been sick. He had indeed been sick and had been told to prepare to die. Okay, I'm going to go back for a minute. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. We're in chapter 20. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. 
Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. You know, it's a terrible thing to be told you're going to die. And no, there's nothing you can do. And it came to fast to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came unto him saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I've heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. So we also know, beloved, there is nothing the Most High cannot do. We can be in a situation that's inescapable, even death. But we know that if the Most High turns his blessed face towards us and makes his face to shine upon us, he can recover our days. We can gain time that we have lost or that was not going to be given to us. That's what he's telling him. I've heard thy prayer. I've seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the, the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake. And for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they took it and laid it on the boil. And Hezekiah, he recovered. But then Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? That I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. And that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. And Isaiah said, that this sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? They're talking about the shadow basically of a clock. Shall it go back 10 degrees or go forward 10 degrees? And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backwards 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. They're talking about the sundial, beloved. At that time, Baradak Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominions that Hezekiah showed them not. Some of us, beloved, bring people into our houses, into our lives, and we show all our secrets, all the things of value to us, we lay it bare before them. Knowing this person actually meant us no good. Babylon had been an enemy to Israel, but suddenly because good tidings were coming, Hezekiah is trusting an enemy. But what does the word tell us? Bring not every man into thy house, for the deceitful man has many trains. He's very crafty. And here's the other part. Ecclesiastes 12, 10. Never trust thine enemy. Never trust thine enemy. But let's see what Hezekiah does. Hezekiah hearkened unto them. They had heard he was sick. All they did was come to present, uh, to check on him, to see how he was, okay? 
he sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah. Hezekiah is feeling so full of himself, feeling so good after trusting in the most high. Now, suddenly, he's trusting in the messengers of the king of Babylon just because he appears to wish him well. Maybe they came hoping he was going to die. But what does Hezekiah do? And Hezekiah hearkened unto them. He showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver, the gold, the spices, the precious ointment, all the house of his armor. He's showing them even where his weapons of defense are. And all that was found in his treasures, all his money, everything he had, there was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, what said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, they are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, Isaiah, back to Hezekiah, what have they seen in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, all the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Isaiah is asking him when he says, what have they seen in thy house? Here at verse 15, what did you show them? If you and I are friends, and I know that person meant you no good before, why did you take them in your house? And worse still, Isaiah already knew when he asked the question, what did you show them? What did you show them? Hmm. Some of us, beloved, we meet men and women and they talk so kindly and they look so good. We just trust instantly, even though something in our gut tells us not to. Some of these same said people are family members that we have had bad history with, but because they appear to care, you just open the floodgates to them and this is something, once again, we are told not to do. Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness, beloved. But when he asked them, what have they seen in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, all things that are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. This is a king. At that time, many believed he may have been feeling so good about himself. You just got 15 years added to your life. You were dying. Now you feel so good that you're trusting in an enemy. But the word tells us, put not that trust in the arm of man, but in the most high. Trust in the Lord. But Hezekiah went another way. After reigning so long and doing so well. Hmm. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers has laid up in store until this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall be taken away, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Basically, they were going to castrate them. That's what he's telling them. Okay? They're going to take away their manhood, their ability to produce children. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, good is the word of the Lord, which thou hast spoken. And he said, is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? Basically, beloved, Hezekiah was full of his son. Some of us, we get the feeling so good. And people speaking those words we want to hear that we open the door to the enemy. Isaiah was prophesying because Judah would go into captivity. 
and be taken into Babylon. He was prophesying in everything he said. Babylon did besiege them and they lost. He was prophesying of a future event that would come to pass, beloved. Many of us, when we become comfortable, we turn our back on the words, the most high, the, the advice, the pure words, the most highest times. And there's a suffering for it. There's not just a, a trust issue when it comes to trusting our so-called enemies from other nations. There are enemies among our own, beloved, that we cannot trust. Some of them are jealous. They want to see our downfall. You have to remember when Yeshua HaMashiach was betrayed, he was betrayed by a fellow Hebrew. It was not somebody from another nation that he was betrayed by. So when you trust so easily, be it in an enemy or just letting people in where they have no place be, no business be, we open ourselves up for a lot of problems. He started out, he was dying. Many of us, that threat of death on Hezekiah can be the threat of death on us, of dreams, of hopes, of achievements that we wanted to bring to pass. And instead of it dying, we were given a word from the Most High and it was revived. Not only was it revived, we got length of days added on to us, length of days. And we end up feeling so good and sometimes get so full of ourselves that we let the enemy in. And we want to show off. We, we, we just feel in ourselves. But we forget what the Most High told us. If you are going to put trust in anyone, you put it in the Most High. You don't lay bare everything you have. There are people, particularly sometimes some females, they want a husband and you're deserving of a husband. But every man that smiles in your face does not a husband make. Some of them are looking for what they can take and not what they can give. Some females are running under that same guise. And when you're doing well, when you're doing well, just because he came to check on his health doesn't mean he wanted good health for him. We know that because in the end, Babylon attacked and took everybody and everything out of that city the treasures, the gold, everything he showed was taken away, just as he told him, just as the prophet Isaiah said. And some of us, beloved, we open the doors to people that not only should you not open the door, turn the lights out, don't answer, don't say air a word. And definitely, no matter how good or how blessed you're feeling, do not recount everything that you have, all your blessings from the Most High. You have to be aware of who you're speaking to. There are rivals, there are people who don't want to see good for you. I am going to go into what, wait a minute, I want to get the right one because I had it. And this is speaking about Judas and what Judas did. But I wanted to read from the book of Thessalonians. However, this is so thick and so heavy. I'm just going to speak, okay? I'm just going to speak because it's a lot. Many of us, again, I'm going to, this is Psalm 41, verse 9. Yay. Mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, did, which did eat my bread, have lifted up his heel against me. Mm. But, beloved, there are some we know we should not trust. I don't care how pretty they are, how handsome, how well-spoken. We know there are some we should not trust. 
And yet we do. And understand something. Just because they have a high position does not mean that person is trustworthy. How do we know that? Well, let's look at what happened to Yeshua. And Yeshua going up to Jerusalem took the 12 disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests. These were men of God who were betraying him. We know that was their plan, that one should die. This was not coming from other nations. This was not coming from a long lost friend. This was coming from the chief priest and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, to death. There are some people, beloved, and shall deliver him to the Gentile to be mocked. They handed him over to the Gentiles, beloved. Some of our own people betray us, and they betray us to the heathen nation. They, those skin folk that are not kin folk, those folk. There is a senator right now who is trying to compare the awakening of the house of Yasharel, calling it equal to white supremacy because Yasharel woke up and know who they are and we are coming together as a nation, but he likened it to white supremacy. A Judas Iscariot who throws away and betrays his own people to the people he knows tried to destroy us and still want our destruction. Don't let everybody in your house and understand something when I say in your house. Sometimes in your house is in your head, in your heart, in your life. Don't open the door for everybody because some of them people want your destruction. And don't assume just because this person has a title See, one of the things I learned when I was younger, my mother used to say it all the time. If you really want to know a person, get rid of the title. Some people's titles blind us to the person, to the person, okay? When we look in the book of Maccabees, there were Israelites that wanted the position of high priest, and they wanted to gain that position, which they were not worthy of, they were not called for. They wanted to be a priest so badly. They went to the heathen, turned on their own people to the point of helping them die. They did it through deception. Do not open your door to everybody because everybody does not belong in your house. What house? Your head, your heart, even in your body. Some of us lay with people that they got death on their mind. They've got your death, your destruction. They mean you no good. That's what I'm talking about. How do we know this happens? Well, if you want to say, well, you talking about family too? Oh, yeah, I don't know if you don't remember Cain when he went for a walk with his brother Abel. Abel didn't come back. Or Esau, who to this day comes after the house of Yashavah. Mm. Don't open your door to everybody. Don't open your door to everybody. And not just your, the building of a house. Your, your, your secrets, your mind, your heart, your body. Okay? Some people do not mean you any good. All right? They do not mean you any good. I was, when I read again, I read this portion, except from the book I have, it reads differently. I'm going to read the part that I, the, the way it reads for mine. Do not invite everyone into your home, for many are the tricks of the crafty. And understand, your home is into you, not just the building of your home. You, your life, your every day, your secrets, your dreams, your hopes, your fears, don't Open the door, okay? Don't invite everybody. Don't invite everybody below. 
for many are the tricks of the crafty. As a matter of fact, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells us, Ecclesiasticus, test your new friend. You have to test these people to make sure. Some people, mm, if you ever heard of two faces, and in reality, they really got one face. The other face, they just hide. It's that smiling faces show no traces of the evil that lurks within. Okay? Um, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. And people that you know in the past never meant you any good. I don't care how many smiles they give you. They can drop some tears. Doesn't matter. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Come on now. I ain't trusting you. There are some people that can make themselves cry the drop of a hat. I've seen it. Okay. And sometimes you only get one time. Sometimes you only get one time. See, when you read about Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, okay, he didn't show them all that he had multiple times. He did it one time, but see, one time sometimes is too many times, which could be the end of your times, okay? Sometimes one time is too many. Sometimes one time, trusting somebody that's jealous of you, you know it, you feel it. Whew. Sometimes one time is too many, all right? I was just reading this and this word came to me, it came to me. Trusting people, inviting people into your lives you don't know and opening up the, just opening up your treasury to them. You expose your children to them. You'll turn your back and leave your kids in the house and that's a stranger. You don't know them. You do not know them. When you go out that door, that baby should be with you. Man or woman, I don't care. Don't leave that girl with that woman because she's a female. Don't do it. I've seen where schools send a little girl home with a woman in Philadelphia. Thinking the woman knew the child and she brutalized that little baby. The girl was five years old because it was an enemy of the family. And she came in with the face of a friend. Don't open the door to everybody. Don't open the door, beloved, because sometimes one time is the last time and it's too much. It's a word, beloved. It's a word that I wanted to share because I was reading it and the first thing that came to me was Hezekiah. It also came to me how many of us are just too trusting. And that is why the word tells us, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall, not maybe, he shall direct thy path. What's that mean? He'll make your gut tell you, nope, no, nope, I, I don't need to know why. I just know I know what I know what I know and I know something ain't right with you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't care if you're shining like a light. If you know what you know when you know something's wrong, go with it. Well, you crazy. You trip. Okay, then I'm tripping. But mm -mm, mm -mm, nope. Don't open your door to everybody below. Bring not every man, person, woman into the house. Because the deceitful man have many trains. Minds read, for many are the tricks of the crafty. Many beloved. And understand something. Even though we're talking about heathens and other nations. Two thirds of Yasharel is not going to make it. Because in the last day. You got two thirds running around. They have no love for the other third. They're doing pure evil. They are not conscious. They have no fear of the most high in them. They don't care about people. There are young men right now running around, beating down, robbing young women. What young men? Men that would be classified as Israel. Beating down the female Israelite for a couple dollars. Two thirds. The two third. So you be aware and let that discernment come upon you. Let the spirit of truth testify to your spirit, leading you to all truth. And if 
something don't seem right, don't trust it. Let me tell you something. Yahuwah is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. If something's not right, that's a confusing feel. Uh, put it, put, you got to throw the brakes on. Pump the brakes. No. Nope. Well, I thought we could just do this quick. Ah, pump the brakes. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no. A word, beloved. Shalom. Now, I have to see where this recording went. It's still recording. Oh, interesting. This is a first. I'm still learning. Shalom, beloved. A word.